This episode of the Amp Hour is brought to you by NetBurner. Have you ever bought an embedded development kit that took a day or weeks to get to Hello World? Are there endless libraries requiring build after build? And do you find yourself banging on your desk, waiting for your application to compile and download, when all you want to do is test your code and get it out the door? NetBurner provides the easiest way to develop and deploy network-connected embedded devices. With a complete solution of hardware, software, and development tools, your prototype will be up and running in no time. For more info and a special listener offer, go to netburner.com slash theamphour. This is the Amp Hour Podcast, recorded July 1st, 2013, episode 152, Chris's Capitalism Colloquy. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the AEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Chris Gamble's Analog Life. What's up, nerd? Hello, David. Welcome back to another episode of the Amp Hour Electronics Podcast. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> it's always it's always a pleasure. Uh, right. Yeah. Come on. Admit it. You're sick of me. After what? Well, only had two and a half, three years. Yeah, yeah. hundred fifty-two three, episodes. Three years. Three years in August. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We're just sick of Three each other. Three years. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The magic is gone, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just uh, sell it and start afresh. We should. We'll yeah, just we sell could probably it and get, sell it and uh, part our ways. Yeah. 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 Just like uh, Hackaday. Hackaday just announced Hackaday that they're uh, news. Hang they're on, looking it's for a buyer. The, coming through the uh, amp hour teletype. Sorry. <laughs> it still makes me laugh, but for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and so, news uh, of the day is, yes. Yeah, well, we just saw this. This this just popped up. But, uh, you know, Hackaday, obviously a lot of people read that. Even, uh, you know, people not necessarily just interested in electronics. Um, hmm. And, uh, yeah, It's a looking... very popular place to, if you've done like a, you know, a like a project, you know, if you've hacked a project or something, it's, you know... If you get listed on there, it's good because you get a lot of traffic. Yeah, yeah. Same. I mean, same for us. When we've been listed on there, you know, we've had lots of visitors. Maybe some some of our listeners now even found us through that. So, uh. what what do you call a website like that? It's like a sort of like a news gathering kind of. Yeah, like an aggregator. And aggregator. That's the technical yeah. word I was looking for. There. You go. Yeah, and it's. I mean, it's kind of a community too. Except I don't know if they. It's a community you know, so in comments. the way YouTube is a community. You know, you have people who, <laughs> who just love to leave comments. You know, that's uh, yeah. you sort of just watch it, you know, all day long and leave <laughs> good yeah, and bad comments. Been, yeah, it's been through its its ups and downs of uh, nice and not so nice comments. So, uh, yeah. But it was started by uh, Phil, at, uh, who's now at Adafruit. So, it's cool. Hey, Phil. If he's listening, I'm sure he's too busy to listen. Probably those guys are busy. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's interesting though because Jason Calcanis, the guy that uh, uh, owns owns the site, is uh, actually like you know gives figures and everything about you know how many people look at the site every day, which you don't always see about about mm. sites and yeah, it's, and it's, how much they earn. Yeah, which is yeah, interesting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's all there. It's all pretty open. Yeah. And they're looking for a new editor if they do get bought, and because uh, Caleb, the current editor who's done some cool videos and stuff, uh, he's leaving too. So, yeah, yeah. they're going to do another website startupy thingy, yeah. my bob. Yeah, yeah, think about that. Yeah, and I don't I know. Guess they don't it's... have time to run it anymore. So, yeah, right. Yeah, you'd think with all the people in the world, there'd be you know, there's probably a couple out there that want to be working on this kind of thing. So. If people well, are interested. That's the thing. I mean, yeah. this is the kind of this aggregator thing is is the kind of stuff you can you know hire someone to do. You versus know, it's, uh, versus like actual... say me for example, you keep telling me to oh go hire someone to edit your videos and oh, do that sort right. of jazz for you. You know, it's not 
it's not quite the same. You know, this is something that doesn't really... I mean, you don't know the person who owns the site, really. I get you. It's, right, right. It's yeah, not personality-based. You know, it's, not, it's, uh... it's, it's not personality-based. It's just pure information-based, really. Right, right, right. Yeah, mm. a lot of administrative stuff. Yep. Yeah, I, that's, uh, that's a lot of publishing these days, really. It's mm. Publishing is weird. It's really weird. Yeah. And Tell me I doubt it. our audience really cares about it, so... <laughs> no. Well, they may not so, yeah, give it a toss about are interested. Hacker, either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so what else is new? Uh, MakerBot's broken, I saw. My MakerBot? It... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's been broken for a long time. Bloody thing. Yeah. 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 These these tools just don't work. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. They're just not ready for mainstream consumer consumption. Yeah. Well, you do have an older one, but... Uh... Yeah, which yeah, actually tough. does yeah. work a bit better, you know. <laughs> right, right. Go figure, you know. But no, the firmware update procedure is retarded in it, and I bricked it. I mm. bricked my MakerBot, so, you know, it's just sitting there and just goes, duh, and just turns on the, you know, the, the LCG just, LCD just pops up with the black squares of death, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm. Oh, that's why, right. I, I, that's right. I saw you were trying to get, like, AVR dude, right, the, uh, to, to flash yeah, the firmware. Now, can I have a a little impromptu rant? A whinge? Yes. <laughs> God, yeah, I, I saw hate... Your, I saw your thing about that with the EXEs uh, and everything. And... Like, uh, well, why can't these tools just work, right? I, <laughs> you know, because normally I use um, AVR, Stu- Atmo AVR Studio, right? Yeah. And, of course, my machine wasn't set up for that, so I dragged out my Odin notebook. I had it installed and I hooked it up to my AVR studio dongle which has its own issues with bloody installing that thing oh the Django driver serial driver needs to be installed before this other driver needs to be installed and they conflict blah 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 bloody hell and anyway so I was I got talking to my chip you know AVR studio talking to the chip and then I go right I can download I finally found the firmware image file I think I've got mm-hmm. the correct one. It's not yeah. obvious from the MakerBot website. Uh, well, no, sorry, from the GitHub repository. And uh, and I tried to install it. No, wah, no hex file not compatible with AVR Studio. Oh, far out. Oh. Oh. So everyone craps on it. Well, MakerBot suggests using AVR Dude, and everyone craps on about ADR, AVR Dude. I've never used it. So I'll go to the AVR Dude website. Okay, there's a website there. And there's a download page. Great. I go to the download page. Great. They're all out of order, but eh, I can figure it out. I can read dates. Okay, here's the latest version. I download mm-hmm. and install it. And, uh, well, un- unzip it. And uh, there's no XE in there. It's the bloody source code. Oh, yeah? <laughs> do, do, do they tell you that anywhere on there? You know, it'd help on the... Like, there's not much on the main web page for AVR, dude. It's like, here's AVR, dude. Here's the download page and, a, you know, and a few other things. And like, you think they would tell you, you the, you cannot download the XE from this site. If you want the executable, go somewhere else. And it's like, oh, far out. Give me a break. Why can't these tools just work? Uh, you it's, know... It's just crap. It's... It's this kind of thing where it's, um, it could be, you know, it could be PEBCAC, right? It could be that you're not it, doing well, it quite it, right. It could be. Well, no, but apparently that is correct. There's no executable on the website or in the download. Right, right. And I it does tell you is, that somewhere if you go deep down in the manual and read it. You yeah, know? exactly. I mean, that happens in a lot of tools. You know, it's <sighs> uh, it's just a matter of your target audience. You know, they they figure that if people really want to program something, they're going to go figure it out. And so it's, it's like that with a lot of mm. different kit, kits and you know, programmers mm, yep. and stuff, it just, yep. that kind of stuff just gets kicked down the road because it's like, well, we could fix this, but maybe 95% of our audience or our customers get it to work and they know the flow and it's like, whatever, yeah, I, <laughs> you know, it, and, oh, and it's, it's the ridiculous. same thing with it. it and, the, and the funny thing about it then is that some customers will then, they'll fight tooth and nail to keep the flow the same because they already know it, right? Or they've written scripts yeah, right. to, to mm-hmm. deal with that kind of stuff. And that's that's when it gets really funny because you see people fighting for this stuff. You know, they yes. they say no, 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 you can't change anything. And it's like, well, I yep. want to make it better. <laughs> no, <laughs> and, uh, I yeah, I don't understand these open source tools, right? That insist on not having an official executable. And yeah, I know there's a whole philosophy thing behind it, and you know 
all that sort of crap and oh you know no the the source code is is you know the the holy grail and all that sort of stuff the problem is right if there's no official or de facto standard at least um executable then how do you support this shit right i mean people you know you leave it up to the community and forums and stuff to for to you know uh, to support all this well somebody says oh my avr dude doesn't work well what version of the executable are you running well i don't know i compiled it myself well there you go you know i mean how do you know yeah, yeah, like there's does, no standard baseline, up, right? It, up, it opens you up to a ton of variability. That's that's definitely true. Exactly. But I think again, it's it's the same thing of you know. Well, uh, first off, it's a I don't I don't know if it's open source, but it's uh, you know, it's a community project. So that always mm. hurts too, right? When there's no centralized body to yell yeah, at. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but but, but yeah, somebody it's... wrote this thing. You think they would at least put on the website? Well, here, look, I don't create the exe, but here's someone that has. And look, everyone use this as a baseline. You know, yeah. look, and like there's a lot of people that said, oh, there's a copy of AVR dude executable in the in the Arduino tools or something. Right. So, right. you know, well, well, bloody hell. Yeah. It just yeah, bugs me. It really does. Right. You know, and, and, because well, especially in tools like that, you just want to work, right? It's a tool. You, you know, you just want to install it, run it and program your chip. Yeah. Right. You know, that's it. You don't want to be dicking around. And I've, no, I, I've, I agree. I agree. I've done a rant on this before about um, you know the Pick Atmel AVR, well you know the um, uh, tools, you know microcontroller development tools. If you buy one of these third party programmers, right? I'm a big fan of choosing the official programmer, right? Because at least you've got baseline hardware and baseline software to work with, right? So when you go and get support, it's like you know it, there's more chance of it working. You know, if it's the official manufacturer's tools rather than some AVR dude programmer that somebody somewhere in their basement wrote, you know, I mean, I, yeah, it I think that might be a difference in mindset, though, too. I think, I think that's, you know, a programmer's mindset, right, is, is to do continuous builds, to have, to have Mm. source code in a repository somewhere, right? And then, and then to do updates like that versus a hardware person, right? You, you and I are used to, all right, Rev 1 is this board. Rev 2 is this board. <laughs> it's like, and you've got no, a ba- you set a baseline each time. Yeah, there's, that's right. There's no, yeah. no 1.5, or if it is 1.5, you can look at it and tell because you've got uh, 30 gauge wire and jumper all over the place and <laughs> right. little cuts to your traces, right? <clears throat> yeah, that, that's, a, that's a big deal. You know, that, that is a difference in mindset. Mm. And I, I, think, I think as people move into like from software to hardware, they, they have to deal with that too because it's, it's tough to know when. Not only like changing your mindset, but if you are moving into the hardware world from a software background, like knowing when mm. to pull the trigger, right? Because you can't just incrementally right. change right. stuff. You're right. You do mm. need a baseline. You need to know mm. that I have this this BOM, I have this you know this layout, mm. and this is Rev A, right? This is there's nothing else mm. to it. Maybe yeah, you can yeah. change no, parts exactly. and stuff for the bomb, but yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough that's a tough thing to deal with when you're. When you're trying to bridge that gap between software and hardware, it's a uh... <laughs> and and I think for development tools like this that beginners are potentially using, right? I think it's just completely wrong. I mean, I see it all the time, right? Be- beginners ask a question. Oh, you know, how do I? You know, I'm I'm starting out with AVR chips. How do I program it? Oh, go and use AVR, dude. Right? Yeah. And it's like, well, k- bullshit. That's a, I think that's the worst possible advice. You can well, someone, I think a lot of people are basing that on the the Arduino system, though. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, you see it compiling each time in Arduino, right? It says AVR dude. Yeah, but you don't know it's using AVR dude, do you? Sure you do. It's been a long time. Yeah, no, no. It's I... got, if if you use the verbose output, it shows all the. the oh, different... I write the verbose yeah. right. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just time. part of the, and, and that's right. another thing, right? That's a that's a. It's not, AVR dude's fine. It works well, mm. right? But it's it's part oh, of yeah, a flow, I and people don't want to change yeah. that then, right? So. Yep. You know, it's just a it's just an exposure thing of if you're exposed to it and and you get used to that mm. flow, then you're gonna want to keep it the same. You're gonna suggest it to others because then you can well, support the, them. Yeah, but the Arduino is a bit different because they do set a baseline, right? They go, here's version, you know, you download version X of the Arduino tools from their website, That's true. and it includes yep. one, you know, it includes the build of AVR Dude that they've done, right? It's not like yeah. you've got to go and install AVR Dude separately. It's already handled. You know, and baselined for you. Right. So you know that's 
Yeah. Yeah, I think I think sometimes you yeah. do get that. I mean, you do get that choice sometimes, right? I think about it like like KiCad, right? So KiCad, you can actually right. get like nightly builds of KiCad so that you're right. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. rebuilds every night or whatever, or you can pull yep. stable releases, and that's kind of the idea we're talking about, right? A, yep. a PCB Rev A would be a stable build. <laughs> yep. Regardless of how unstable the hardware might actually be, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's just a it's just a mindset change and. You have to have well, it. I've got experience with that working at a software company, right? Yeah. Um, you know, Altium, right? Yeah. CAD tool, very complex. You know, we're talking like, you know, 10 million lines of code all up or something, right? And yeah, yeah. we would get that daily build thing. And, you know, everyone was encouraged to use the latest daily build. So at some, you know, in some cases, yes, we were updating our tools daily, you know, wow. straight from the, you know, overnight build. Yeah, it ran overnight. Well, let's, you know, and then word quickly spreads through the office. Oh, that build was shit. Something went horribly <laughs> wrong. Yeah. And, oh, no, I just Go installed back. it. I Go just back. did real work with that. You know, yeah. so we were actually trying to do real work, you know, because I was in the hardware group and we were developing yeah. real products, you know, may, laying out real, um, in some cases, very complex boards and using these daily builds. And it was a nightmare. Yeah, it that's really tough, was. man. Mm. I've never, I've so, never tried. Yeah. I've never had the the gumption to try that. Uh, it's, <laughs> right. It scares me too much because <laughs> there's so scary. many other things that can go wrong mm. in any project, right? It's like, mm. I mean, mm. I I know that that's the basis behind a lot of like like software. People always talk about like test driven development, and it's because of that, right? So then when you do yeah. these builds, you have this standard battery of tests you run and everything, and that makes a lot of sense. Mm. That's a good way to deal with it. But it's like, man, <laughs> that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just avoid that altogether? <laughs> and that's what Can we did. Can you just tell me end. when it works? That's, yeah, <laughs> that's what you had to do because sometimes my files would be corrupted, right? My PCB file oh, would be geez. corrupted, and then yeah. I'd have to go to the guys who wrote the PCB core and go, "Look, this is a really valuable file. Can you recover it for me?" And they'd, you know, write a little script that would, you know, undo all yeah. the crap that happened, you know. And they'd, yeah. yeah, they'd ultimately. So I don't think I ever lost anything, but the amount of time we lost yeah. just you know dicking around with unstable builds and non-baseline builds was incredible yeah but it, it had its advantages when you're internal to the company it means you flesh out any errors pretty quick you know any major showstoppers pretty quick you know yeah that's why oh, they yeah, liked yeah, yeah. using us as guinea pigs because we were using it to design real boards so hey let's use the hardware group as guinea pigs to yep. you know <laughs> i've heard to, that uh, referred to as any showstoppers Eating your own dog food. I think that's what. Yeah. I forget where I read it. it it's like a software phrase, I guess. Yep. But uh, yeah. Yep. You know, making sure that it still uh -huh. works because you're using yep. you're a regular user. So that's, that's it. Uh, that's that's it. <laughs> so there's pros and cons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had uh, some uh, open source hardware junkie on Reddit actually was asking about firmware version control because this is kind of like basically this is all built into version control stuff right so right, we're talking right. about the the versions of of software and and you know being able to pull from a repository and stuff mm. and uh and so yeah we're talking about github and subversion yeah and right all that you know all that sort of jazz yeah i i uh i haven't i i i've i haven't jumped into github i know a lot of people use it and uh yeah i've never I yeah, well we used uh, Subversion at uh, work before, and I kind of yeah. liked it. I got used to it. I thought it was really quite neat, and the Tortoise plugin, which allows you to just you know from and it all worked from uh, Windows Explorer, right? So I could just you know yeah, it would, right. worked really well. It was I right, really liked right. the way. It, mm. Right, you're gonna get creamed for that. You know that, right? Everyone, everyone listening right now is like, no, like no, I, I basically, use, yeah. I. I I know. Basically, every everyone I've talked to says no, no, no. Sub. I've used subversion before too, and and basically the difference is, you know, the like the branching and the trees and all that other crap. Mm. That's like, I just, I don't I don't personally I I still think of everything like like you do with like directories and you know backing yeah, up individual yeah. files. Yeah, same here. Yep. And the and and the Git mm. style of things is like you know actually actually like forking different pieces of code and then being able to uh -huh. merge it all back together. And what I've come to determine is. I could learn. Uh, learning Git seems like if you're if you're working from a command line and you're building like that, you're doing you're doing your own make files and mm -hmm. everything for firmware. That's when it's like I, I know there's other reasons to use it as well, but like the people that really use it, you know, well are doing stuff from the command line. They're mm -hmm. you know they're they're yeah. doing immediate pulls from they're cloning from Git and everything, and 
Yeah, that's fine. I just I haven't done it, and <laughs> no, I don't. It's... Well, I don't need to. There's no, you know, I still don't use Subversion. I just, you know, there's my my projects aren't that complex. There are a couple of C files and a couple of PCB files. You know, it's not right. rocket science. You know, right, right. Yeah, mm. I've had. I've had this discussion. Maybe we've had it on here before, but Probably. I've definitely had it with other other people before too. And it's like even with like big FPGA projects, like mm. just the nature of the files, you know, like actually because there's a lot of binaries and like encrypted stuff because it's you know there's a lot of proprietary code right. that the vendors own. That sometimes it's just like. <laughs> I had this big argument with, with someone I was working on FPGA project with before, and they're like, "No, nope, just zip it all up." Number yep. seventy two, and now yeah, you move to seventy three. Yeah. You know, it's just like, <laughs> well, that's that's one way to do revision control. It's not very good, but uh, <laughs> no, 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 it works. It gets you back to a baseline. You know, yeah. Well, yeah, you and know? that's I guess just that's eventually it, right? Yeah, you could always just, uh, you know, keep switching computers, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh boy. Yeah. Then yeah, you know your software no will stay we'll the same too. <laughs> no doubt we'll get taken to task over this. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Us yeah. Hardware anyone, hacks, you know. Any anyone with any kind of software experience, you know, they almost yeah, always yeah, well, they yep. they just tell you right about now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. You can't talk back hey, right now. <laughs> but at least we know what GitHub is. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, we are doing right. better. I, I'm. I'm. I mean, I'm interested with, with people. You know, some people put their their PCB projects up in GitHub, and I haven't. Right. I haven't figured yeah, that one yeah, out I, yet either. I see that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's on my to-do list for sure, but uh, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think the the thing that this comes down to though is that you know, like, obviously, hardware is very different than software and firmware, right? And right. hardware is hard, right? <laughs> it is hardware yeah. is hard. Beautiful yeah. segue. Thank you. Yeah, you so, so you posted this article about uh, it was from LinkedIn talking Did I? about. Uh, yeah, I think you basically ah, reposted yeah. right after I did, but uh, yeah. Ah, right. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, but I, basically I they're, they're talking about remote of and which is a little uh, iPhone robot that's uh that went commercial. And it's just, you know, mm-hmm. they're talking they're you know, they talk about the the difficulties of moving from Kickstarter over to actual manufacturing and then manufacturing in volume and everything and it's Well, it's by volume they're talking about Kickstarter volume, which is like they're talking like 4,000 units or something right. i mean this ain't volume this is just you know this is amateur hour still right yeah it's yeah but i mean zero zero Seriously, to four thousand is know, tough I mean, right i mean like yeah. it's not easy but it's mm. it's it's no like a, uh, a hundred thousand would be serious production right i mean I, I four thousand yeah. is still you know you can do everything the old-fashioned way you know and yeah it's it's not that you know it takes half a day to run it you know or a day to run through four thousand boards through a smd line you know it's not you know yeah it's not right. rocket science but then again if you get something wrong yeah it's you know you've you know four thousand boards so you do your standard uh you know you let's run a pre-production panel through the machine first to you know to make sure everything's right oh the machine's set up okay and you quickly test the board and oh everything's fine okay and then you press the big red button and your four thousand boards pop out. Yeah. You know, so yeah, so there's a few <laughs> issues God help there. You but if your it's rev not... isn't right, it's still, you know, <laughs> right. if it's a systemic error in your, yeah, yeah. your actual layout or something. Yeah. Oh. But it's but it's hardly like this is not this is not huge volume. Once again, right. you know, the well, volume the volume people will back me up. They'll go, ah, oh, that's just you know, you know, yeah. it's like the RF guys saying, you know, a hundred megahertz is DC. You know, it's right? Like, yeah, ah, this is practically DC volume. You know, yeah, it's all it's all relative stuff, right? Yeah, and yep. it's but but I think I think the thing is we're going to continue to see a trend of you know people who are you know getting into manufacturing and saying that yeah I want to make stuff I I want to produce things and sell hardware and then. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be this. It's going to be a continual shock <laughs> to the system for people that are jumping into it, you know. All right. Because it, it it's hard, you know. <laughs> yes, hardware is hard. Hardware is hard. Yes, it is. Uh, I was I was th- I was talking to my wife about about different industries over over the weekend, and it you know like hardware came up as like a industry that's not particularly profitable. Right, I mean, you look at like software. You know, there's no, Hang there's on a no. Sec. Imp- okay. Hang on a sec. You were talking to your wife about different types of 
industries like this. Does she care or were you talking to? <laughs> or were you talking to her? <laughs> or were you just, you know, and she was just rolling her eyes? She was probably nodding her head mostly, but... Uh, right, I, okay. I was right, just, right. I was, we were, we got talking about mining, right? I mean, obviously mining is huge in Australia too, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, just you like mining and oil and, and just industries that are big, big right, industries, right? right? I mean, okay. like big stuff and just like uh-huh. where the capital cost is i mean she's studying accounting too so it's like you know like she has some interest in some of this stuff and but you know it's just interesting from a you know software right it's, i put software in the same field as like as mining i mean obviously there's still what? capital costs involved with both but you know mining Are you is serious yeah come what, on what's, What's the a difference? Software is a software. The only capital cost is Jolt Cola and pizza, and they're not capital; they're consumer. They're, yeah, you know, that's they're true. That's true. I mean, yes, I know right? there's a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, um, a lot of initial investment in in uh, mining, but like in, in terms of like the actual per unit cost of moving from one unit to a ten thousand, like we were just talking about, like there's there's very little relative to the, the, the outcome, right? So, like, mining is mostly buying your equipment, buying the land, and then pulling stuff out of it, right? And software Well, it is, becomes an operational production issue then. Yeah. Because mining is mining production. I mean, it is a production optimization issue, Yeah, essentially. Hmm. Well, I'm probably hmm. out of my league on all that stuff, especially yeah. talking to an Aussie. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, I see. I come from the oil exploration and mining yeah, yeah, business, yeah. so right, right. I I know how much money and capital goes into it. It's phenomenal. Huh. See, mm. I, I guess I was thinking about uh, you know it. It seemed like an initial investment, and then and then mostly uh, you know mostly a harvesting of value. Then right, and the same kind of thing uh, with well, that's the idea. Yeah. 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 Right, and, and then, but the difference being like with hardware, right? You have an initial investment for tooling, and then you have a pretty right, significant right. Uh, capital cost per unit, right? So if I'm making a board that's, you know, I can sell for a hundred bucks, it's going to have twenty bucks or thirty bucks of parts in it, right? And the PCB right, and everything else, yeah, right? Yeah. And there is that chunk of cost, so you can only make so much more past that. For just from there's an a fixed margin, it becomes yeah. a fixed margin, you know. Right, and right, right. Yeah, and there's whereas, no, and there's almost no magical limit where it suddenly becomes, you know, an order of magnitude cheaper. Right. You know, if you right, jump yeah. from ten thousand units to a hundred thousand units, it doesn't necessarily, you know, it's not like your, you know, your base cost drops by an order of magnitude. Right. Yeah. It's 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 still that's the that initial. It's sort cost of like a gradual. The... Yeah. It's like a gradual decline. You know. Yeah. It might gradually get cheaper as you go up in volume, but. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I was I was looking at all these different industries, though, you know, just thinking about that kind of stuff, and the right. same kind of thing for like, like just where, I, I mostly what I was doing is I was looking at the uber rich, right, and just wondering where where uber rich people's money comes from, and because I mean, when you'll be uber rich, <laughs> there may have been that, yeah, may, <laughs> right, but yeah, no, that's yeah. not what drives me. It's more curiosity. I mean, like honestly, like looking at that, right, right. So I mean, software is an obvious one, right? There's because and and there's a lot of value. They're they're creating a lot of value with minimal unit cost uh, mining is a lot of value with a large upfront cost but minimal unit cost um mm. brands right brands are worth like like looking at so then looking at apple right they might have a computer with two hundred dollars worth of parts that someone else could sell for 800 and they're selling for 2000 right and that difference there is brand right so brand is mm. uh, minimal per unit cost and that seems like what I—that's basically the, the what I what I came up with. Like anyone in any kind of economics 101 or you know business course is like a duh. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was just interesting because then you know like comparing comparing the two, right? Yeah. As people start looking at hardware companies, and because mm. hardware is getting more focused these days, it's just going to be this big smack in the face for a lot of people that aren't used to upfront costs. So right, that's going to be the the main thing. And that's why Kickstarter came along, because right. people can't afford the upfront cost. Yeah. So they have to get the money up front in order to pay the upfront cost. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. And you can fund some crazy things, right? I mean, like, I mean, we've seen that, right? For things that are unbelievable 
<laughs> unbelievable projects, right? Like, oh, I don't know, a space telescope. <laughs> a space telescope? <laughs> or as I wrote, a friggin' space telescope. <laughs> <laughs> this is very cool. Why did I not hear about this? I probably would have backed it so I could get my um, photo in space. Yeah. Right, That'd yeah. So if, if people haven't heard, what they're doing is basically they'll upload your photo and then I guess somehow they'll frame the Earth in the background so they'll... Yep. Personally, Photoshop sounds a little easier to me, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a cool it's a cool uh, a cool project. I've seen this mentioned. I've definitely seen the name because I I always think I look at it and I think it says Ackroyd, you know, like the Dan Ackroyd. Yeah, but, but uh, it's Arkid. <laughs> Arkid, yeah, A R K Y D. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, they raised a million and a half bucks, and uh, so they're going to send hardware mm. up to space, right? I mean, like. <laughs> That's, they that's had, if you watched cool. the video, they had a I assume you have they have a very impressive list of people in there that they had back in this thing. Yeah, right. Right. And, yeah. and good I'm not sure how I didn't really hear about it either. And I'm sure a lot of people have, but uh yeah, it's it's cool if if people haven't seen it yet, so <laughs> now I've, now I can't get my selfie photo in space. Now you'll just have to pay button. twenty million and go up to space, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll get there. Don't worry. <laughs> if I'm in the software industry, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, who's it? Is it Richard Branson's the one sending people up there, right? I no, think, but uh, um, no, no. The first um, uh, Microsoft, um, the Microsoft oh, head, head architect. No, no, not Paul Allen. Um, oh, what's his name? Mental Block. He was Mirvold? the uh, chief architect of uh, the Office products. Oh. Oh. I those names all run together for me. Yep, yep. Anyway, he he was uh, the f- was he. I'm not sure if he was the first sp- paid space tourist, but he was one of the early ones. Um, and uh, oh, he paid the Russians, right? He said, "Yeah, up he with, paid with the Russians and went up to space." Yeah. yeah, he used his, you know, cost him twenty million bucks or something. But hey, you know, that's nothing compared to all the Microsoft shares he had during yeah. the boom years. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Ah. <laughs> uh, Ah, uh, money. Money's mm. stupid. <laughs> Some days. I've, I've got... Charles Simeon. Oh, goodness Simeon. sake. Charles... Sh- yeah, he's Hungarian. Yes. Charles hmm. Simeon. Thank you know. very much. <laughs> yes. So you asked, you asked Google who the, uh, who the Microsoft founder was? <laughs> no, no, he wasn't a founder. He was just one of the early em- oh, oh, employees. Oh. Yeah, gotcha. And uh, my uh, Bill Gates, if my memory uh, computer history serves me correctly, Bill Gates hired him because he did a software thesis on um, uh, the best way to develop software. You know, like it, it, it's he developed his own technique for developing software, and Bill Gates thought that was the greatest thing ever, and uh, hired him as chief. You know, oh, well, one of the software architects, and tried to use the I think they call it the uh, Simony method or something, or anyway, something huh. like that, and uh, to to develop their software, and it didn't quite work that well, but still, he was a really smart dude, and and uh, was the architect of uh, a lot of the um, main Microsoft products you see today. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and in, there, there you go. In two thousand nine, he went aboard uh, Soyuz um, to the international. Right. Space Station. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's No, a... sorry, in 2000, he's been twice. Ah, oh, two sucks of the sav. 2007, <laughs> he went yeah. up on, uh, yeah, and then four trips later, he went up again in 2009, went to the International Space Station. But, hey, hmm. his, net, his net worth is a billion dollars, so, you know. Yeah. Well, at that point. <laughs> yeah. Liked it so well, much, Have you, heard, have you heard the phrase, uh, software is eating the world? Have you heard that? No. No, it's kind of like a, a. I think the idea behind it is basically just that you know, every everything that can be optimized by software is a, is slowly being optimized. The point that you know it's mm. hurting jobs, hurting uh, everything else, right? I mean, like it's just it's just well, in, but it's also everything. It's also creating a new field of jobs. Also, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, yeah, it's taking jobs away, but it's also creating jobs in a different space. So. Mm. That's true, and, and yeah, and, and any basically any time anyone says you know they took our germs, there yeah, there <laughs> usually is that uh, right. <laughs> that uh, other side of things, and yeah, I mean like uh, so Paul Graham wrote an essay uh, recently 
about investing trends, right, in software and, right. and hardware and everything else too. And um, and he said the same thing, right? But, but basically that there's a consolidation of everything. Basically, he's saying that there's going to be more startups uh, around a lot of this software explosion, <laughs> continued software explosion, of course. Not <laughs> well, like it's, I don't think it's started it's in the late yeah. 70s. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard about this software? It's going to be pretty big, Dave. We should uh, We should get in on this. Uh, kind of rings a bell, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've heard a couple of people have made some bucks from it. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Speaking of which, we need to make some bucks. Ooh, yes, we do. And we have a new sponsor. We do. Yay! <laughs> so we are happy Netburner. to announce... NetBurner.com and, and welcome, NetBurner, yeah. Uh, yeah. They have uh, a wide range of uh, stuff to get... <laughs> you online quickly get your get your projects up and running ethernet based hardware very quickly and With minimal capital outlay <laughs> are you reading that up something <laughs> i think dave just made that I up did. hopefully <laughs> I, I, yeah i i did <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> anyway they've got lots of um uh yeah net based uh boards you know so to get your project modules and things to get your projects on the web, online, yeah. networked. Yeah, and and the thing that they really like is the uh, getting up, getting your stuff up in more, more less than a day. That's that's kind of the big thing. And so they, uh, Tom was actually nice enough to send both Dave and I a board to try out, and uh, we both were able to. Uh, a you know, day? Basically... It took me about five minutes, and I was well, talking exactly. to this thing on my Ethernet connection. You know, it's not... <laughs> yeah, yeah. The hardest part it's for very... me was uh, I, I put in the the license key wrong, and then I kind of did a, yeah, a head bonk. Yeah, I put the then... license key in wrong too, and yep, yeah. that fooled me for about a minute, and then. Yep, but once you figure that then out, we're it, uh, yeah, it's it basically there's a tool that allows you to go out. It, it'll even discover the stuff on your network if you're on the same Ethernet network, or if you got a crossover mm-hmm. cable, and then you can just start talking to. Uh, you know, there's just like an embedded uh, web server in there. It serves up pages, yep. and uh, and you can kind of start and toggling there's embedded, hardware. There's embedded Twitter clients and all sorts yeah. of jazz, all the usual uh, fare for network stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and the so- other thing I found interesting is that they not only just sell the products, but they also have, I believe, uh, consulting services where if you need somebody to, you know, uh, write your, you know, if you've got a brilliant idea for some new whiz bang gadget you want to put on Kickstarter, but you need mm-hmm. you don't know anyone to write the uh, software for it, you can actually hire these guys to do all your high level intelligence net yeah. programming and get your widget online. Yeah, Neat. yeah. Basically, basically, you can buy you can buy the kit from them, turn around and pull their pull their design files into your design and have this kind of module sitting in there, or even on the the one that we have, it's actually pluggable. It's got like a you know point one inch headers, uh, similar to like you know a lot of a lot of dev boards out there. But you could take that and then plug it into your design if you wanted to, and it's just it's sitting there. It's got a cold fire processor. It's got memory on board, and you could it could just sit there, and then you could pass commands to it, and uh, yeah, it's it's. You know, it's pretty good from that perspective to get up and running quickly. I've got a city now. It's staring at me right now. It's um, got some LEDs. I'm flicking some dip switches. Yep, yep. I was playing. Good old uh, dip switches. Ga- I was playing a game on it before. Tic tac toe. Yeah, I was doing that too. Tic tac toe. I was playing tic tac toe. <laughs> yeah. You can't win. I, I never win. Yeah. I've, but uh... you can stop nuclear Armageddon with tic tac toe. Oh, that's right. What's that? War games? Is that the Matthew Broderick movie? War games. Is that who it was? Absolutely. Yeah. Would you like to play a game? Yeah. <laughs> Shall we play a game? Yep. Sorry, I, I can't do the uh, Joshua voice. <clears throat> uh, so people should check out netburner.com slash the amp hour. Uh, Netburner is actually giving the amp hour listeners a 20% discount on kits. And if Sweet. you're interested, uh, they're also doing, uh, they have a, a bounty for writing up articles, basically. They'll uh, pay you to write articles for them. So uh, yeah, the netburner.com slash the amp hour. And thank you to Netburner for helping us out so definitely be sure to check out their keeping stuff keeping us in business yeah so yes. that rich uh, so that uh, Chris can become filthy rich and sit on a throne of cash he's always dreamed of <laughs> I'm going for the golden toilet Dave that's the real thing <laughs> right golden toilet yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh boy yep I'm telling you you just gotta yeah. I don't know well you can always do it the old fashioned way you know, What's gun, that? mask, bank, 
you know, <laughs> still works these days. Yeah, yeah that's I the thing. So. Nobody expects that anymore. You know, <laughs> the, right. the, the, they'll the, never the, see all, it coming. All, all of the criminals are working in finance now. You know, <laughs> and uh, right, that's where the real, that's where the smart criminals are. But you still do it the old-fashioned way. No, nobody expects that yeah, anymore. Never see it coming. You know. No, I never see. Or you could build a robot right. to do it, right? I mean, you could. Yeah. Uh, we could do an old-fashioned of... heist, you know. Yeah. <sighs> Pick somewhere in yep. the middle. And go rob a bank in Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some ca- country we can't get extradited to, right? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh. You've already been flagged for analysis by the NSA. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've, yep. I've, I'm yep. toast. Just for talking to you, really. Yeah. That's exactly. The, that's the worst thing. <laughs> You're talking to somebody who's, who's no doubt on a no-fly list somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if people are listening to this, like, years down the road, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll just say we're sorry now. Uh, please get us out right. of jail, you know. As we're rattling our, our you know, tin can on the, on the bars. Right, right. <clears throat> Let me out. Uh... Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, saw, I, was looking at, I was looking at our stuff the other day, and I saw that, like, 80 people – had listened to our first episode last month, and it's like, oh really? Oh, wow! Oh crap! Okay. Yeah, people are like, yeah, they're still, you know, kind of catching up or going back and listening to old stuff. So, whenever awesome. you are listening to this throughout time, welcome. <laughs> you can check out how much our first show sucked. Oh god, it was terrible. It was so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, we haven't improved much. No, 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 no. Well, we'd have to practice <laughs> right. and. That's... It's still the same crap format. Yeah, you know, we just <laughs> make stuff up and <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what have you been working on lately, man? Uh, how's your uh, how's your power supply project going? <clears throat> Is that uh, no? <laughs> Surely you jest. I do. Well, no, I don't actually. No. Is that uh... I keep saying that I'll just um, sit down and do a whole bunch of videos get them out of the way and then i'll have two weeks free to work on stuff and it's like eh, it never happens <laughs> right right forums always calling your name it's tough to do yeah. that you know to, to work ahead like that you know it's like yeah yeah in, in but regular there are some people too. who actually can do that that's natural to them for me it's not you know i don't yeah <clears throat> i think it's good if, plan if you have guy. Well, yeah, if you have like a deadline coming up, right? If you were going on a if you were on a trip where you couldn't have internet, right? You'd have that kind of thing. Oh, I've I've done that before. Yeah, when we've yeah. gone on holidays, I've got well, you know, yeah, okay, we've got a deadline. I have to shoot four videos before I leave, you know, and yeah. edit them and upload them and Yeah, and nobody knew I was gone, you know, and here I was from my uh, hotel room overlooking the beach with my uh, feet up or, you know, and in yeah. the swimming pool, I Tablet comes out and boom, enable a video. You know? yeah. And right. uh, well, it's the yep. same kind of thing as like when you have you know like when you have a deadline at work, right? It's like right. I've I've had a deadline. I have I have a deadline coming up, and it's just you know, it's not like I I'm doing. I wasn't doing work before, but it's you know like the nature of the work changes, right? You have that right of course that shift and desperate that's <laughs> desperation <laughs> desperation yeah desperation is a stinky cologne <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah so you know you know how it goes though you know you have the yeah. the last minute changes and the the cuts and the jumps and the the late yep. night soldering sessions and uh it's <laughs> it's, it's i'm telling color. you quit Quit? Oh, yeah. Is it? Quit. Uh, well, you can. Is it Dave, Dave's well, you're Dave. you're 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 going to have your million dollar business soon, aren't you? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah. you put it on here. You put it on the list. It was the perfect oh, segue. Oh, that one. Oh, I was like, what are you? Ta- <laughs> I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Yes, that is a uh, that is Hello, a rising McFly. trend. I know, right? Yep. That is a rising yes, trend. Is Forbes that, uh... article you put on here because you lust after this stuff. You're just there no, searching what? there all night. Oh, how to be rich. No. You know? da- Dave, you yes, make you... me... Yes, you are. No, this was on Reddit. Come on, let's be honest here. <laughs> I guess, yes, I was on Reddit and... Oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> the rise of the million dollar one person business. Right. Article in Forbes magazine. So it must right. be true. Yep. I think it's interesting just because it shows, I mean, it's the same trend that we see in a lot of other places, right? Of just 
smaller and smaller businesses, right? I mean, like you're a one person mm. business. You refuse to be anything yeah, yeah. but a one person business, right? And well, I know a lot well, of people. I don't that... refuse. By the nature of my business, it's very difficult to do anything but. Right. I heard refuse. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I see this too in electronics, right? I mean, like they even talk about the different categories and everything like that. They kind of move through the different, you know, levels. And this is just based on U.S. tax returns. And I think they did some surveying right. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like a lot of it in there is consulting type stuff, right? And and, and working on electronic or working on like scientific and engineering well, they consulting. Well, most of it was about. finance and finance consulting and stuff like that, which isn't surprising. Yeah. In the 5 million bracket, like they actually break it down. These are interesting numbers. Yeah, there are yeah. 1.6 million sole, as we call them here, sole trader, um, same as I am, you know, and same yeah. as you are, right? Sole trader, 1.6 million sole traders in the US earning between 100,000 and a quarter of a million. Right. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. That's a <laughs> right. lot. And there's and there's uh, twenty six thousand of them between one million and two point two and a half million. Yeah, that's right. a lot too. And they do actually, and they do actually say, where is it? A quite a f- uh, the next highest one in the bracket was the entertainment business. So I think they're talking about the YouTube sort of, you know, the newfangled. Oh yeah, YouTube well, it could be that, or it business. could be you know, like a. Just a personality, and you know, like a TV oh, right. show, right? If you incorporate yeah, yeah, as course. a TV as a person or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but the point I was trying to get with all this is that, you know, it's it's getting, it's getting to the point though where even in in a small scale manufacturing type thing, right? I mean, getting to hmm. five two hundred thousand dollars, right? I mean, and that this this survey is talking about receipts basically. That's revenue, and so there's there's a lot of cost in there. They're not profiting two hundred thousand dollars, right? But no, right. the, yeah, the business is making two hundred thousand dollars, and yep. like, yeah, that's. I mean, like, that's a lot of money, but it is doable, right? If you if you are a small time, uh, you know, biz, a small business person, you're working, or even if you're fabbing in your house, right? You know, if you think if you're mm. selling a two hundred dollar kit and you sell a thousand a year, that's there. There it is, right? I mean, like, the, it's two hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. But exactly. You I don't. Mean, you know, I, I I know somebody who has that mythical one million dollar a year business. You know. Um, yeah. selling hardware stuff, but you know they the margins are very slim because yeah, of the right. area that they operate in. And you know he dreams about earning the same amount I do. You know it's like, oh, yeah. you know, and he, and he and yet he's a million dollar business. So right. he's, yeah, yeah, and, it's and all, so it's all yeah, about yeah, margins. Yeah, five percent margin is what fifty grand a year, right? So that's yeah, effectively yeah, exactly. what, what what he would be taking <laughs> yeah. home, and then taxes and everything yeah. else. But um, but yeah, this is what I was getting at before, right? That's the same kind of thing of hardware being a uh, you know, a high ca- capital business, right? Because right. he's got to pay nine hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in hardware costs and shipping, and and really, this isn't one person business. That's the other point of the article. It's like it's not really one person, right? It's one no, person that's right. listed, and With then you have an accountant, you have a, you have a lawyer, you have maybe yep. even you know like a the lawyer. Come assembly on. person. don't have a lawyer. You have an accountant, okay, yes, and you have an assembly person, and you maybe have a contractor who does some work for you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it is hard to, you know, do make that million dollars as, you know, a true one-person entity, really. I wouldn't put the accountant in the same, you know, accountant, like, you know, I, I wouldn't count that. But certainly somebody who does uh, work for you or something like that, you know, some contract design work or, you know. Oh, right, 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 right. Mm. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just it's just getting. I mean, it it is getting easier to do this kind of stuff. This is the rise yeah, in of course. a lot of these you know smaller startups as well, right? And, and I think another thing that is driving a lot of this is just like the fact that so much stuff gets pulled in to to chips, right? This is this is the stuff that I've mentioned before with uh, you know just the 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 systemization of chips, right? And right. and we've seen we've seen this like the the CC twenty five hundred series from TI right that's the uh, that's some of their wireless things and there was another one here that that was released recently by a company I've never heard of but the actual uh, the chip itself looks interesting it's called uh, Dialog Semiconductor and basically it's another Ooh. it's just an, another small a very very small uh, Bluetooth system on chip and it's I mean it's just like these kind of things like. Basically, it's a, you know it's a it's a little arm. It's got S it's got SRAM on it. It's got mm-hmm. uh, baseband type stuff. It's got encoding. It's got radio uh, circuitry and everything like that. And basically, then it has 
it has uh, stuff that you can talk to remote stuff with, right? So if you want to talk mm. spy and, you know, you can have the the ARM processor actually, you know, talk to other chips. It's like, you know, you can make little sensor boards, right? And that is a lot of what we're seeing in the hardware startup space of, yeah, you know, network sensors and stuff. This this is the reason that the Internet of Things will happen, <laughs> not because of anything else, not software, I don't think. I think this, this stuff and what TI is doing and Nordic Semiconductor and all those others, like, that is the final piece, really. I think it's it's always been about the wireless, and and this is another one. Basically, this is another one, and they're saying it's low cost too. I don't really know the the cost because it well, just came it's, out. It's but... low energy. It does the uh, four point Bluetooth low energy thing. Yeah, right. So yeah, mm. yeah. So it's a cool little part. Although uh, it's, um, it needs three point eight milliamps for receiving and uh, TX. That's... That's so, not that's, that's not very high though. I mean, no, like honestly, no, for radio, not. that's that's not bad at all. I mean, so it's uh, you know, it's it, th- this is this is what I was pointing out though. It's just like this is yeah, the, yeah. the the this is what's driving a lot of a lot of that other stuff, and it's what's going to drive. I mean, this is what's going to change the nature of hardware. I think too, right? This is the trend I've seen. You know, it's like from an analog perspective, I've seen a lot of the systemization of chips where. You know, you get more and more stuff pulled into either onto the silicon or into the packaging. Um, because if you uh, even just look at this block diagram, right? People can go to the site and look at the block hmm. diagram. And it's similar for the TI parts and everybody else. But I mean, like, okay, so there's a processor. There's uh, there's SRAM inside. There's, uh, I guess that's crystal. But there's RF circuitry. There's clock management. There, and then there's, 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 there's like UART type stuff. There's a DC to DC converter. There's LDOs built in. Yeah, like all that stuff. You, you think about need... the former no. cost, right? It starts to balloon, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like to use your Back to the Future uh, favorite thing, right? It's like when Doc rebuilds the the microcontroller that on the the hood yeah. of the DeLorean, right? It's all tubes and right. everything else, and <laughs> I mean it's the same kind of thing, though, right? It's, it's it's just that's what it used to be, and then if you think about how many people used to be designing each of those components, it's like no, no, it's just commoditization and. And it's you know basically you have these building blocks and you just drop them into different p- pieces of silicon and mm. away you go. Yeah. And this I mean, is not this a big is part actually either. a crazy chip. Is yeah. is this a chip of the week? I think this is a chip of the week. Sure, sure, chip of the week. But, I mean, it, we don't it, know if this works. It's got yet, a but... ten. Well, it's got a ten bit <laughs> ADC in there. It's got a quadrature encoder, I squared C, spy, UART. It's got two UARTs. It's got timers. It's got an ARM mm-hmm. Cortex M zero. Which is it's meh. got um it's got <laughs> encryption built in, right? Yeah. It's it's got the radio transceiver, of course, and as I said, it's got the uh you know all the DC to DC converter stuff. So you don't even need your external power supply. You need some components, obviously. Um, you probably yeah, it probably doesn't have an in- and, integrated FET, but just because of the size, I mean, it's tiny. Oh, right, it's, it's low yeah. it's low power too, so I mean that's that's pretty crazy too. Unfortunately, it's a little pain in the ass. BGA. Rrr. Well, no, they have QF, millimeters QFN by well. two point. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. right. All they show is a photo of the BGA. Yeah, yeah. BGA is uh, mm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, Evil. But this is yeah. yeah. This is really cool. This is yeah. amazing. Makes me right. want to go out there and design something. Well, there you go. I mean, that's the thing, and it's like that's and that's the other side of it, right? I mean, like I can complain Bingo. about the systemization all wrong all, all day long. But at the other the other end, it's like, you know, I look at me and I could go and turn around and pick a module type chip like or SOC type chip like this off the shelf. It's like, yeah. oh, I, you know, I could use example code from them and I could basically I know how to you know you know use spy ports and you know talk to other other chips that have spy ports or I squared C. It's like, it's within the realm of possibility that I could do something like that and that should be scaring people. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> and within six months of just. Having yeah, with you know, seeing this chip, you can you can have your million dollar business. Well, yeah, via I don't know. Yeah. You know, Kickstarter or something else. Well, maybe, yeah, but yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, like, mumble, mumble, yeah, mumble. maybe, but I mean, that's the difference between going from one to you know four thousand, right? That you know, you. Well, no, you can get the money without having to do that. That's you true. can get the money, and then you got to figure out how to do it. Yeah, so there's hmm. the kicker. No pun intended. Why would that be? Uh... See what I did there? No, Kickstarter. No. Got it. Kick- Kickstarter. I got it, the folks. Kicker? Right. We're cool. We're cool. I got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Oh dear, Eddie. 
yeah. mean, that's not the only thing either, right? I mean, like, so, so like, TI, I mentioned with the, the CC2500 series, but they, you know, they have a lot of this stuff that's out there too, right? They, they release this, what is this, precision design library, right? I mean, like, mm. and, it, and it, again, this is the thing where, if people excuse my ego a little bit, right? It's like, you know, as an analog designer, I look at this and I'm like, oh man, they're doing all the fun stuff, right? <laughs> right. And then, and then practical guy who's on a deadline chirps and he's like, dude, just shut up and use it, you know? Just yeah, go, right? Exactly. There's still going to be yep. there's still going to be tons and tons of problems and even if you <laughs> even if you drop this in, then there's going to be issues over there, right? It's like Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 exactly. No. Yeah. Murphy Murphy gets you any way you go. Oh, yeah, it does. Murphy's an ass. <laughs> Bastard. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I don't like about all these new system on chip, and it's been happening for 20 years, right? I'll see a neat chip come out, you know, and I'll go, oh, that's so cool. And then I'll get a project idea, and then I drop my current project I'm working on and never finish it because I've just started another bloody project with the latest whiz-bang freaking chip to come along. It's a pain in the ass. I wish they'd stop it. Yeah, I or think, maybe I should just stop looking. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's one thing. I think, I think the the current the currency of the future will be how fast you can iterate a design, right? I mean, maybe even to the point oh, yeah. of, you know, there there are design houses out there that'll do, you know, like I guess we've already we see that a lot too with like the the computer industry, right? I mean, like they'll they'll get they'll get pre information about like a new Intel processor, but then you know they right. they turn they turn stuff pretty oh. darn fast, you know, it's, like it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, and they throw people at it, and they throw a lot of money at it because you have to do quick turns on a lot of PCBs and stuff. But you know, like uh-huh. that's that it's not it's not like mm-hmm. a new phenomenon. But I think it, it's going to be increasingly that the constraints on engineers of the future will be, you know, faster, faster, faster. Right? Time, it's, what yeah. like it always hasn't. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's though. always like, time, but you know, yeah. But these days, in terms of you know, in terms of seeing the number of people, right? A new chip comes out like this, right? And bingo, you'll instantly see, you know, within, you know, a month, you'll see, you know, maybe two or three projects on Kickstarter and you go, oh, no, I've missed the boat, you know? And it's like, yeah. oh, it's so yeah, weird. I... Before, that thing couldn't happen, right? You could take, oh, a new chip comes out, but you could take your time yeah. getting your, you know, project up and running, and, you know, it was pretty rare that somebody else had come out and scoop you. But now it's just every man his dog has the tools to – Yeah, and the, exactly. uh And the platforms to come out and gazump you. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. all told, it's it's a good thing, right? I mean, it's an access oh, – it's course, really an access of thing of yeah, – yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, like, you have – if you have 100 people looking at a chip and then – 10 say, I'm going to use this chip, and then three actually go and do it quickly. Yeah, I mean, like, that's just mm. an access thing. Whereas before, maybe out of that 100 who saw the chip, only, you know, only five could actually afford the tools or get the tools up and running or yeah, had right, access right. to the, the data sheets yeah. or whatever else. So, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. o- overall, it's a it's a good thing. From <laughs> from a, a marketplace perspective, it's a very good thing. I think from a, you know, I, I think what it... it it's this weird blending of like needing to specialize but also being general right you you need to have right. something that you're you're really focusing on right so if you're if you're really into i don't know like you're really good at making baby monitors or something like that you know like you could take this chip and then drop it in and just go right if you already mm. had like another mm. idea and that's probably a bad yep. a, bad example but you know some kind yeah, of you know. core technology but then you bolt these other things on there quickly right and then you're willing to pay mm. You know, you're willing to pay people for their support or for the chip's expertise, right? Or, you know, like even no. like our sponsor, like NetBurner, right? You, you're willing to pay just for this quick, quick turnaround of yeah, go, right? I just need it. I need it. Here's the exactly. chunk of money. Go. That's it. Get out of my hair. Yep. And I don't want to see it again. And I, and so I think there is – it's it's a, the downside to it all, I think, is that it gets kind of – it's strangely exciting and boring, right? I mean, you have to be really good at one thing, but – because mm-hmm. you have to be good at one thing, you have to kind of continue to kind of fend off and protect yourself from other people, right? If you want to, if you want to actually have a business there, you need to be really good at that one thing and then quickly pull in other technologies <laughs> right. and go, right? It's a, it's a weird, it's a weird dichotomy because it's, it's exciting and scary and boring all at the same time. <laughs> those, and how many times all... have we discussed this now? No, hundred, hundred fifty-two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. 
Yeah, and I think I mean the other <sighs> thing too is that you know you're gonna you're gonna stack software on top of it too, right? That's that's the other thing. Of, yeah, 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 right. You know, like so like uh, SparkFun, Mike Cord at SparkFun, he tore apart a, a Leap Motion, right? The, which is that really right. cool uh, hand controller for computers and everything. And I thought it was gonna be mm-hmm. this crazy hardware. Uh, it turns out though, it was just it was just infrared LEDs and then a lot of fancy software. Yeah. Right. And so. Yep. I, I don't know. I thought I thought it, I thought it was going to be all hardware though, because there it seems like that could be an interesting hardware phenomenon. But it turns out, mm. nope. <laughs> Apparently, your um, former employer. For yeah, the, yeah. Oh well, uh, the owner no, of my well, former kind employer. Of. The owner. Yeah. Well, a subs- Yeah. Sorry. The. Okay. <clears throat> You used to work for Keith Lee, but uh, yeah, this is Tektronics. They're all under the same group. They are all owned by the evil Danaher group, <laughs> and um, they're, <laughs> they're talking about uh, looking at um, some really schmicko um, 350 gig. Yeah, that's a lot technology. of speed. <laughs> that's yep, silicon yeah. germanium uh, stuff What's... from IBM, of course, who do a lot of the research on this. And yeah, well. Let's let's take a, a, a second to stop. Obviously, a lot of people know <laughs> what that means, but that means in the span of one second, up and down 350 billion times. That that's a lot. <laughs> and if you get down to the deep physics of it, I mean, how do the electrons even have time to? Well, how many electrons are you talking about? You know? Yeah. Naff all. Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the it's physics ridiculous. of it is is uh it's way outside my my scope but but the thing that's interesting about this stuff is you know you've so when you did those v- reviews of the uh what was what's that uh chip in the agile scopes the real time something something oh that that was a similar thing it was a silicon germanium yeah thing wasn't it right front yeah, end but, yeah my point hybrid, is that, that you know i mean in terms of the 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 actual A to D though and the and the core in there, that is that is basically the scope, right? If we're talking about systems on oh, chip. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, no, the rest that, is just a PC. The, they yeah. they bolt a PC onto this hybrid front end and that's it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. And yeah, and so yeah, this is this is like the ultimate system on chip, right? It's and you know, they'll <laughs> they'll carry with it for, for years and years and years because you need to get you need to amortize it all out, right, over time because it's silicon germanium's not cheap and nowhere is the the verification mm. of these crazy ass <laughs> A to Ds and everything, and but and they're talking about real time bandwidth scopes of seventy gig, which yeah. is needed for um, four hundred gigabit per second optical links, and then they're talking about one terabit optical links measurement tools for for that. I mean, just ah, oh, yeah, unbelievable. I mean, right, you know, right. How yeah, it many makes of these me feel guilty are, about. Are they going to sell? You know, ten. You know, like yeah, and they're not gonna be cheap. Wow, <laughs> no, no, I mean, exactly. everything's getting faster, right? But that's just the the diversification in the industry too, of right. I mean, you and I mm. are talking about you know a single Bluetooth chip, right? But that's not where the hard problems yeah, are anymore, no. right? Because it's been no, 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 it's trivial. Because yeah, yeah, some poor bastard has had to use this half million dollar scope to actually yeah. develop this. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we someone just at go, the fab oh, is... I'll buy that for I'll buy that for five bucks a digi key. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, and then we'll <laughs> complain about it too. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. <laughs> yeah. We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. Uh, I don't really care. <laughs> 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 well, someone on your forum was asking about that too, right? Of actually working in an IC yes. fab, right? And it's like that—that that is the the new frontier of you know, like we've known this, we've talked about this, especially from an analog mm. perspective, mm. right? If you want to make, if you want to get rich in analog, you go work at a fab. I mean, you're not going to get rich, but you know, you if you're oh, well. if you're a good analog designer, <laughs> you will get paid well because it is not easy, right? And no, it's very specialized, right? And and then basically that, your output gets sold over and over again because it's regular and proven, yeah. Well, should we talk about this? Because this person, I forget their name because I don't have the page open. Anyway, they're a, they have their degree in software, right? They didn't do an EE degree. But they their, their dream job, his dream job, <laughs> is to become a, a chip designer, right? Yeah, and, I'd, uh, question that. I'd question that if they're... <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I don't know where the like, dream came from, but... Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, fine. Okay, he's got a dream. And then, 
you know, and there's like a, a few people, including myself on the forum, that says, yeah, look, I'm sorry, but, you know, <laughs> it's incredibly difficult. Here's why and how it's nothing like electronics, you know. Oh, yeah, you you do some hobby electronics. You build stuff up on breadboards and you design boards and everything's hunky-dory. Yeah, you're, you could be a really could be one of the world's best electronics design engineers, practical electronics yeah. design engineers. Doesn't mean that you can become a chip designer. It just and he's like asking, like, oh, what what books can I read so I can go to my job interview and um you know, and and get a job so that I can pass the job interview for a chip designer. Well uh. unfortunately it's orders of magnitude more difficult than becoming than reading a few books, designing some boards, and becoming an electronics designer, which you can do. You know, right. Right. it basically comes down to the old thing of well, if you can bring it, you know, you prove can you do it. So you bring your stuff along to your job interview, and sure, if you bought your you know twenty nanometer chip that you designed <laughs> along to a job interview, right? That'd probably hire you. Dave, if you right? brought a twenty but nanometer I, chip along to your job interview, they would, they would pay you to teach them how to make 20 nanometer chips because that's the well, leading yeah. edge technology right now <laughs> <laughs> but anyways geometries aside you know what i mean right? what's a couple yes, nanometers you... among friends right all right <laughs> and and, well, and of course the difference here is that it's cheap and easy for anyone to learn electronics and build stuff and get experience and then get a job if you so desire you know, yeah. but it, it just doesn't work the same for designing chips. It just doesn't. Right, because the right. tools are almost, you know, unobtainium. You cannot get them, you know, or even if you can, it's like, you know, it, it, you can't get chips fabbed. You know, you've got to be a millionaire to get, you know, your own chips fab. Yes, you can do it for a couple of thousand dollars or something. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. get one of those pool services. But uh, look, it's just, you know, it's not right. the same. It's, it's, not, it's not the realm of hobbyists. For, no, for sure, no, right? it's, no. Maybe, it's maybe not, super rich student. It's not in the affordable student. realm. Yeah, maybe, but then you've got the time because you have to wait oh three months for your chip to come back or something. You know, right, and, right. Like, and well, ooh, I goof something up, and the, as we all know, we've talked about goofing up is the only way to learn. Right. Yes. So you've got to goof that up either you're at your own expense or someone else's expense, and really. No, oh, so I hate to burst his dream, you know, well, I hate to burst his bubble. It's, I um, would think, uh, so looking at this from a, a very far away, right, and just from the information supply, <laughs> right. I would tend to guess that he has an interview already with a chip company, and his dream job is based on the salary. I don't want to make any assumptions. That, no, I just made a ton no, of assumptions. I don't, no, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> There's no indication of that. Okay. Well, anyways, so, yeah. yeah uh, I think he just goes, oh, chips are cool. I, oh, I want to design them. And well, yeah. okay, They great, are cool. You know? But, then, you know, I had, I, had, I had some classmates that went to go work for Intel, and I actually interviewed with Intel, too, and they didn't want me. And uh, right, right, rightfully <laughs> so, right? Because, you know, hearing about it after they came back from co-ops and stuff, I mean, a lot of it, you know, verification and stuff like that, actual, like, digital hmm. chip design, Man, some of that stuff is like it's it's very Verilog heavy. You know, they're moving into system mm. Verilog, system C, a lot of the higher level languages now, and it's. Oof. I'll, I'll take I'll take board levels. I'll take I'll take solder and, smoke any day. But and we're, yeah, and we're yeah. just talking the digital domain there, right? We're, we're we're talking. Yeah, okay, maybe you can get in the back door of a chip design company right by going oh yeah look i know some vhdl or i know some verilog oh look i know how to do test benches right so you might sort of sneak in the back door that way kind of you know they might be the uh they might be the uh janitors of the chip design world right mm. there people... <laughs> no well, offense I mean, that's, to I mean, anyone jerry, who, jerry who said she worked them, up right? like Very that important. right she worked up well, from yeah of course right it's else, not but... like yeah, I use the example of Jerry and how, well, she had developed IP, which was in an FPGA, when a game company approached her. Right, And yeah. then she just went, oh, yeah, I'll design a chip for you. You know, yeah, you know, she just went and did it. It's not like she sort of, you know, showed her fab in a transistor or something. I don't right. know if that was pre or post, that sort of thing. And then she went to a it chip company and said, look, I could fab my own transistor. Can I have a job designing chips? You know, it's just... Not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't the flow. You know? No, it was, it was definitely driven no, by No, no, it was the other, other way. And, right. uh, and, and that's what, what I'm saying. You can actually get in through the back door that way and that's and then work your way up. Once you're in the company, then you can sort of go, 
you know, and you might write some test benches and then you might get involved in some, you know, fab testing or something and then uh, blah, yeah. blah, blah, and you can maybe work your mm-hmm. way up. But otherwise it's just, you know, it's just not going to happen. And then if you start talking, right, there's that di- designing a digital chip, for example, where it's all high level and you don't, well you, well, you do care about the process, but it's all about simulation and verification and all that sort of jazz. Right, right? because, but, yeah, what you said well, with making a mistake, <clears throat> No, no, yeah. you're, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> well, in, well, well, you generally, <laughs> well, it generally is less risk of that, for example, if you're developing a, you know, purely just a digital chip, for example, right? There is less chance of going wrong. But if you think you're going to score a job, you know, that's a totally different world to, say, working for linear technology or something, developing the latest, you know, ultra low offset op amp. Right. Or something, right? Or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, ultra yeah. gigahertz bandwidth. You know, uh, amplifier. Yeah, yeah. Or I've talked to yeah, if, if, that analog domain is totally right, if different. You, world. If you remember uh, Flying Flux, uh, he was a blogger yep. for a while, and yeah, so him and I used to talk a lot about his his stuff. He he designed a lot of analog stuff, and you know, just hearing about the the flow there because I was relatively naive about it too. But you know, it's a hmm. lot of a lot of uh, physics knowledge and and really actually yep. tweaking the tools too. Because when you think about these chip companies are actually working with like a Mentor Graphics or someone, they have these models that are from the fab, right? And then so there's all these different mm. layers of yep. abstraction. And knowing, knowing like the parameters and being able to basically tweak stuff and then tweak test it, it yeah. test it on the bench yep. then eventually, right? You know, it's like yep. and simulation, simulation, simulation. So, uh, I, I, I yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once I learned what it really was, it's like, eh, maybe I don't want to do that, but. Uh, there, there, there's no reason to discourage people from it. Obviously, there's a lot of interesting no, stuff. No, no, no. If you want to, no, I highly encourage you to get in through the back door. You know, learn some uh, Verilog or something like that, and uh, learn some test benching. And you know, you can probably get a test bench job somewhere yeah. at some company. You know, they're they're always looking for people. I think for stuff like that, aren't they? So, mm, I don't know. <laughs> no, so, well, anyway, no, it was it didn't we famously say that uh, microchip was it? No, TI had more jobs advertised for, you know, engineers at, at TI than all of Australia had for electronics engineering jobs <laughs> at, at one point, right? Uh, and that yeah, was just uh, one company in the US, you know? Right, I right. distinctly remember that. They, they had like 50 or 60 jobs, you know? There's, there's not like 50 or 60 jobs going in this whole country, <laughs> let alone at one chip company, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, get a job like that, get a foot in the door and, you know... Maybe you can work your way up from uh, janitor to, uh, you know, chip designer. <laughs> I suppose it's so. possible, but it, you've got to do yeah. it at someone else's expense. You know, you can... <laughs> right? Yeah. So I guess the, yeah, the original question was how easy is it to get a job? I'd say not that easy. Uh, Incredibly difficult. If you have yeah. the right pieces of paper and you know the right people and you have the right experience, then easier than if you're starting from a janitor i think uh <laughs> right <laughs> but it, like anything yeah. else i mean i think the this you know the more and more and more as i'm in the working world right i point to people i don't point actually point at them but my whole <laughs> mental construct is i'm basically like targeting people and saying i i don't want to be like i don't want that job i don't want that job over there either you know like <laughs> like that is that is a big part right. of especially when you're starting out right that that's a big deal right you have to try and mm-hmm. figure out do you want the job or not because say this person talking about chip design didn't know what it was all about if you get in there and you do get the job it's like you don't want to turn around two weeks later and be like oh this sucks you know or two <laughs> yeah, years exactly. later or 20 years later yeah. right i mean like you know like you need yeah. to quickly try and figure out if you like it or not even just from talking to people or you know interviewing people or how, however you can do it yeah you know Listening to Amp Hour interviews, listening to me and Dave guess about <laughs> right. what the actual situation is. Even though we have no experience in <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, don't, don't base <laughs> your decisions. Don't base life decisions on me and Dave. That is a terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, no. That's it. Come on. Let's just stop before we dig our hole even deeper. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so many people's lives are ruined yeah. by our horrible advice. Speaking of ruining lives, uh, I found out I will not be in New York City next weekend. I will actually be in New York City the weekend of the 20th. And so I'm tentatively planning a meetup in New York City July 19th uh, at a Woo-hoo. local beverage facility <laughs> somewhere near the island of Manhattan. <laughs> Establishment. Either on or around the island of right. Manhattan. 
Uh, so, yes, uh, if you are in the area, I will have details and further shows and on the website, so keep an eye out. And we can Sweet. drink beers. <laughs> and you're going to fork over your 1500 bucks for your Google Glass? Oh, I already did, yeah. It's already paid up. Oh, oh right. Oh, yeah. it's already paid up. Oh, That was a, that was a tough to... button to push, yeah. But oh, yeah, yeah, that is the reason I'll be in town. I won't have glass uh, when uh, the event goes off. I'm getting that on Saturday, but uh, right, yeah. If, uh, oh, oh, that's the other thing I was going to mention no. too. Sorry. Uh, so we did have some people that submitted stories this week. The new, uh, the new thing for t-shirts. Right? I was going to, I was thinking about t-shirts, right? And wearing a t-shirt right. to the to the event and everything. But if uh, people want to potentially win a t-shirt every single week. Uh, we have obviously the subreddit we talk about. If you submit a story to the subreddit, either a, you know a link or an idea that you'd like us to discuss on air, um, which you can do by submitting a text post. Uh, if you do that, we'll of all, among all the people that uh, do it for a week, uh, we will pick one of them and send them a code for a t-shirt. So that is a way to win a t-shirt each and every week. So uh, yes, how do we pick one? How do we is pick it one? random? Uh, yeah, it'll be hat. it'll be it'll be random amongst the people we actually talk about. So, um, uh, you still haven't explained so, how it's peaked. Yeah. So this so this week uh, we talked about uh, open source hardware junkies topic and uh, uh, Russ Ramirez's topic and uh, you're naming people, but who's the winner and how do you pick it? Oh. That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> didn't think about that one. Um, we will pick it after the show this week, but we will have a process for it next week. Damn it, Dave, you put me on the spot. <laughs> that's my job. You know what? This week we'll just give them to both. How about that? That that's easier for this oh. week. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a cop out. So thank you to everyone who submitted stories. We will try and get to more stories next week. Um, yeah. So, submit stories, and uh, All right. and it doesn't have to be just be stories, too. That's the other thing I wanted to f- stress. If you just have something you want us to talk about, submit a text post, and uh, that's the way to do it. All right. Awesome. Cool. We'll see you next week. Done. Bye. This episode was brought to you by NetBurner. NetBurner allows you to get your embedded network solution up and running quickly so you can get your prototype or your final product out the door faster than any other solution available today. To hear more about the hardware, software, and friendly build environment, and to get a listener discount, go to netburner.com slash theamphour.